In this video, we're going to continue talking about the dividend pricing model. And I'm going to focus on talking about the math concepts behind the equation. Because there's some really interesting math going on here. And if you understand the math, you can really do some pretty cool things with your money. So before we get started, I'm actually going to start with talking about a math trick that a lot of accountants use. And it has to do with calculating out percentages. So accountants have to calculate a lot of percentages in their day-to-day -day job. And I'd like to just review the basic um, percentage equation that we all know, right? So you, if you take the full value of something and multiply it by a percentage, you get the percentage value of that thing. So, to use an example, 100 times 25% equals 25. We all know this. Um, it's a pretty simple concept. But what happens is accountants often have to do this equation backwards. And so what you can do is you can just flip the equation around and say 25 divided by 25% gives you a hundred. So it's important to just realize you can go backwards and forwards in this equation. So if you have the portion of the percentage of the whole, you can find the whole value by dividing by the percentage. And so what happens is you might be creating a financial report and you might say um, you're dealing with a segment of revenues and say um, the segment you're dealing with is $25,000 of revenue. You know it's 25% of the total revenue. Well, you can quickly figure out the total revenue by taking 25,000 divided by 25% gives you 100,000. So that's your total revenue. So this is just an example, but the idea is when you're dealing with percentages, you can go backwards and forwards through this equation. So what does that have to do with the dividend pricing model? Well, let's look at the math of the dividend pricing model. So just to review the concept, we're talking about a string of dividends or a string of cash flows out into the future. And we're trying to figure out a price of an appropriate value that I'm going to pay for this opportunity to collect these cash flows. So you're going to receive you know, your first dividend, your second dividend, your third dividend, your fourth dividend out into the future. And those dividends are specific values. Well, how much is that worth to you? That's what we're figuring out. And how you would go about figuring that out is you know all these cash flow values that are based on your assumptions. And you, what you do is you take the present value of each one of those cash flows. So if you take the first cash flow, the present value of that is going to be the cash flow divided by the present value equation, which is 1 plus r to the power of the number of periods. So for the first dividend, it's dividend divided by 1 plus r to the power of 1. That gives you the present value of that cash flow. So let's go to the second cash flow. We can do it again. Dividend 2 divided by 1 plus r to the power of 2 and we add that to the first cash flow. And we continue on forever. So we do that for dividend three, dividend four, dividend five, and the total sum of all those dividends which should be the price you're willing to pay. It's the sum of the economic value of this opportunity to receive these cash flows. Well, the dividend pricing model is just a simplification of that. It's saying this equation, dividend divided by risk minus growth, is equivalent to doing that whole long mathematical process out forever into the future. And there's a mathematical proof that proves this that will go from one equation to the other. And you can find it in pretty much every finance textbook. So I'm not going to go through it here with you, but Go ahead and look that up. It's pretty interesting. Um, but it's important to realize that that's what we're doing here. We're taking the present value of each one of these cash flows. And what happens is, 
as you go further and further out into the future, you're discounting cash flows more and more and more because cash flows get riskier and riskier and more uncertain the farther into the future you go, so you'd be willing to pay less money for each of those opportunities. And what happens is when you get somewhere out into 100 periods into the future, you're discounting so much, there's so much uncertainty, that it's pretty much zero with the further out you get. So we're really talking about 100 periods into the future, we're discounting from period one way out into the future, and um, that's how you determine your price. So, let's take this a step further. So now we have our dividend pricing model equation. What happens if we push this to an extreme? Let's say that growth equals zero. All right, that's going to be your assumption. Growth is zero. Well, then you're left with the equation D divided by R equals P, your price. So you're saying your assumption is that your dividends or your cash flows are going to be equal forever into the future. What would you be willing to pay for that opportunity? Well, let's throw some numbers in here. Let's say your cash flow is going to be $15. Your assumption of risk is 15%. If that's the case, you would be willing to pay $100 for that opportunity if there is zero growth. So, this should be interesting to you. And you should draw the connection between the accounting math trick we were talking about earlier in multiplying percentages. Because your cash flow is exactly the same percentage of your risk of your total price. There's a relationship there between your cash flow and the price you'd be willing to pay for that. And your cash flow just happens to be the same percentage as the risk you're assuming. So you should be asking, well, <laughs> why would that be? Why would the price be related to the cash flow in exactly the correct proportion as my risk? And that is exactly the point with this equation. And this should be your aha moment because your dividend payments are essentially an interest rate based on the risk you're assuming. So let's look at this. Let's use the example of a loan. Let's say you're going to loan money to somebody to buy a house or, or whatever. So you're going to give somebody a sum of money, right? And you should expect interest payments back each period based on the riskiness of that individual. So the more risky that person is, the higher the interest rate you're going to charge. So, when you're buying a stock, it's essentially the same thing. You're giving somebody money for the opportunity to get a series of cash flows. And that series of cash flows is based on a, it's an assumption of the risk you're going to take on. So the price you'd be willing to pay for that opportunity should reflect that risk. And those payments are essentially interest payments you're receiving for holding that level of risk. That's the aha moment. So investing is really, it's not about buying a stock or buying a company. It's really about buying a certain level of risk. Investing is buying and managing risks. And when you understand this concept, that it's about this theoretical idea of risk, it takes you to a whole nother level of understanding finance. Because you start to realize that um, it's a really about your assumptions and understanding the prices that you're paying for things and how that relates to your assumptions about the future. So I hope this was helpful in kind of discussing what the math is saying in the dividend pricing model. We started by talking about an accounting math trick and how you can calculate percentages backwards or forwards. Then we walked through the dividend pricing model and talked about the math and then talked about the concept of why 
um, risk is important in the relationship between your cash flow and the price you're willing to pay. It's proportional related to the risk you're assuming. So, there's more to talk about the dividend pricing model, and in the next video, we're going to talk about the implications of what this all means for you.